It was quarter to four in the morning when I woke up from a loud gasp coming from my husband. He was sitting at the edge of our bedroom with the phone in his hand. He just hung up on a call, and I could quite tell that he is in distress. He held his head out of frustration and even let out a huge sigh. What happened? I wanted to reach out to him and talk to him, but I want him to be the one to tell me because I don't want to get in the way of his boundaries. We are a very respectful household. Ever since we married eight years ago, my husband and I have always been respectful towards each other. We never fail to voice out our concerns and establish healthy boundaries within the relationship. Because we want our relationship to be safe space for both of us. On top of that, I want us to grow in our individual lives while thriving in our relationships. I could say that our marriage is a happy one and I'm content with everything that we have. Aside from that, I'm so lucky to have such a good husband. He is so loyal and understanding. Also, he is very family oriented. He values me, his siblings, his parents, and everyone that holds a special place in his heart. He turned to me as soon as he noticed that I was awake for a time now. He moved closer to me and hugged me tight. I'm very sorry, did I wake you up? I held his hands. No, my love, you did not. What's the matter, by the way? He heaved a deep sigh once again. It's my sister. My eyes widened and I adjusted my seat. I knew the problem with my sister-in-law already. She was in a very bad state because her husband had broken up with her. Their marriage has never been perfect. Lapses are present, they fight most of the time, and toxicity has filled it for a long time. There are times that they would physically abuse each other and say abusive words to themselves. I could still remember one of their major fights. It was when my brother-in-law caught my sister-in-law cheating with their driver and I was so shocked at how they handled their problem because my brother-in-law filed a divorce. I focused my attention on my husband again. What happened? Her husband did not only file a divorce but also an adultery case. He has complete evidence. What will happen to her now? I don't know. She called me to ask for financial assistance but we only have enough for us and I can't just leave her because she's my sister. She needs me. I heaved a sigh. My husband has a very soft heart. Financial has never been a problem for us, but I can say that it is just enough for the two of us. I know this is a sensitive topic for you because your mother just had a divorce with your father. I cut him off by holding his hand tightly and flashing a wide smile at him. My love. I am fine with it. I assured him that the topic is really fine with me. I love my sister-in-law and I know that she is at fault, but she deserves at least a little help from us. Don't worry, I still have some spare money here, I can lend this to her. My husband hugged me tightly, a sign of gratitude. Thank you so much, my love. So the next day, we went to my sister-in-law's trial. We were the ones who paid for her lawyer. I could sense that my husband was so nervous the entire time because he knew that his sister was at fault. I don't want to see her behind bars, my love. I could feel the tension and anxiety in his voice. He is in deep worry for his sister but I kept on reminding him that everything will be fine. But in fact, I am also worried for her. She was the one that had an affair and this is the right thing to make her face the consequences of her actions. She conducted a sin outside the legal and sacred parameters of marriage. 
The trial started and as it progressed, we could see that the judge's verdict would be in favor of her husband. Kim, my sister-in-law, was also confident in herself. She stood up for herself and to her grounds, as she kept on saying that the relationship wasn't making her happy anymore. But my brother-in-law was the real victim here, that's why many people sympathized with him. My husband was so worried about his sister's mental health and even her physical arrest once convicted. He was so close to her when they were young, and as an older brother, he felt that he has to save and help her from her demise. But I kept on reasoning out with him, telling him that there are times when it is best not to say nor do anything, and just let the people involved decide for themselves. However, I also understood where he was coming from. He just wants to help her. To our surprise, the trial was extended for another session. My husband was relieved from his anxiety, as much as he wants his sister to be free, but he won't be able to deny the length and weight of her mistake. As we were waiting for the opportunity to talk to Kim, my husband wandered his side across the courtroom and locked it on Will, our brother-in-law. Wait a minute, I will talk to him. My husband went immediately to Will. I saw how they still respect each other, despite how the circumstances draw them apart. I want my sister and brother-in-law to solve things, but I think it is impossible. Both of them want to be out of their relationship for good. I went near them and heard my husband pleading for his sister's dignity and freedom. He begged Will to leave the case and just proceed with the divorce. He promised that he will take his sister away from him and teach her a lesson. But Will was not convinced. He asserted that Kim hurt him in ways that no one could imagine. That's why he was so eager to make her suffer. My husband did all he could to help his sister. The trial went on and the judge's decision would verdict Kim as guilty due to the many pieces of evidence. The next day, the trial continued, and we were right. The court's favor fell onto Will, my brother-in-law. Kim was guilty and was detained immediately. My husband cried. He condemned himself for not doing enough. But I comforted him by saying, The judgment was right. It's not your fault, love. You did everything you could. I was a testament to that. All we have to do now is to move on. I just feel sorry for her. Should we help her? I heaved a sigh as my husband faced me with tears in his eyes. I don't want to see him like this. He is so brokenhearted. I want to help him and his sister as well, but she deserves to learn her lessons. The police officers instructed us that we can visit Kim now, so we headed to her cell immediately. When we got there, she gave us a smug face, as if there was no remorse nor regret in her. Oh, so here you are, the two worthless couples. My eyes widened as I heard her say those things. Kim, please, we tried to help. Tried? Oh, really? Then why not keep trying? You promised to get me out of this shame. And what did you do? You allowed them to humiliate me? You are so worthless. Have you remembered all the things I sacrificed for you to be in that position? You owe me everything, so do your job and get me out of here. She shouted so loud in front of my husband that I could feel the uneasiness in him. I held my husband for support. He is such a soft person and he doesn't take rudeness and cruelty easily. I cannot believe his sister is so mean and has a disgusting personality. I saw her roll her eyes at me. I just can't let her do this to me and my husband. How about you? What did you do? Just sit there and be pretty? <laughs> For your information, you look like a twig. You're not even pretty. You're worthless just like my brother. Go on, live your life, selfish people. 
I was so taken aback by the words that were coming out of her mouth. She's so angry and annoyed. We had no choice but to leave her there. I don't want to stoop down to her level. But by the time we went home, my husband insisted on paying for her bail because he can't fathom seeing his sister behind bars. So as a loving and understanding wife, I don't want to see my husband suffer from this problem. That's why I helped him. I gave him half of the money needed for the bail. He was so grateful for what I did and I told him that I only did it for him and not for his sister because the only mercy left in me for her was gone the moment she talked badly at us. But still, I love my husband so I'm willing to sacrifice for him. As soon as we had withdrawn the money, my husband bailed my sister-in-law while I was staying at home, doing my usual stuff. I thought it would be just a normal day for us, but when I heard my husband parking his car, I also heard a familiar voice. It was my sister-in-law. As soon as she got inside the house, she was acting so rudely. Why is this house so small? <laughs> Your wife must not have a taste. She said it while I was right there standing in front of her. She doesn't care if someone heard her or not. She's so good at bad mouthing and talking shit about people. In short, she has a thrash personality. What is wrong with her and why is she even here? I signaled my husband to go inside our bedroom because I want to be enlightened about everything. What is the meaning of this love? She told me she has no place to stay and insisted on staying with us. I held my head out of frustration. I could only think of possible scenarios where she would treat me rudely in our own house. Until when? I asked out of complete frustration. I don't know. Please just understand. She just got a divorce. I closed my eyes to control my entire body and regain my composure. I don't want this to be the cause of a fight and rift between me and my husband. She is not worth it. I just have to put up with her. That's it. The next morning, while I was preparing food for my husband, my sister-in-law entered the kitchen. I just want her stay here to be peaceful for my sanity. That's why I kept on telling myself to be a better person. I also remembered that I wasn't able to welcome her formally yesterday. That's why as soon as she came near me, I greeted her. Welcome, Kim. Make yourself at home. She just smirked at me. Oh, I intend to, Leah, since I'll be staying here permanently now. My eyes widened. Permanently? Excuse me? What did you say? I said, I'll be staying here permanently. Why? Do you have something to say about that? I just shut my mouth. I don't want to start a fight with her because I know how dirty she will play. Oh please, I just have to extend my patience a little more. I tried to talk to my husband about her staying here permanently with us, but he only told me that it's not going to happen because he will help her find a place to stay. I don't know what to do anymore. The following days have become so hard for me because she started to boss around the house. She changed the interior design of our living room, even the things inside the kitchen. She altered everything without even convincing me, the owner of the house. And when I tried to talk to her, she just silenced me by saying, You're so rude. Just say you're selfish and you don't want me here. I have mistaken you for a worthless girl, but in fact, you're just so arrogant. I wanted to slap her so badly, but I'm scared that she will use it against me. That's why I am doing my best to control myself from anger. Another scenario was when I was washing the dishes after a hearty lunch. She came to me and placed a very large basket on the floor. Leah, I need you to do my laundry today and don't forget to iron everything. I was so shocked by what she said. 
I heaved a sigh before answering her. Uh, Kim, I can help you with some things, but I can't be your maid. Oh, come on, Leah. I thought we were family. Don't be so selfish. She mocked me and even rolled her eyes. She kicked the basket and all her dirty liners were scattered to the floor. Don't be so lazy and do your work. She left me there with a big smirk on her face. I had enough. This is not right anymore. This is abuse. I want to compromise. That's why I decided to discuss it with my husband. As we were about to go to bed one night, I did my best to communicate with him. My love, we need to talk about your sister. She's taking advantage of our kindness. She is treating me like a servant. I know, my love, but she just went through a divorce. She's having a hard time. Let's give her some space and understanding. But it's been weeks, Dan. It's affecting our relationship too. I cannot help it anymore. This is not okay with our very healthy relationship. Okay, let's, let's compromise. I'll talk to Kim and ask her to be more considerate. As much as I want her out of this house, I think that's the best solution for now. But please, the state of our relationship must come first. My husband is so good and it feels like he's more willing to sacrifice our relationship over his sister. I'm already having an internal conflict and I'm so determined to find a solution. I can't let this go on any longer. I need to find a way to address this without causing more tension in the family. Maybe I can talk to my mother about it. She might have some advice. I talked to my mother the next morning and she was so surprised about the situation. I haven't told her the full details of why my sister-in-law is staying with us. She wants to visit us and perhaps by that time I will tell her everything. My mother is my best friend and it was already a year since my mother and father broke up because my father cheated on her. And ever since, my mother and I became so close and became each other's comfort and confidant in all problems. As I was preparing my mom's room for stay, I noticed that my necklace was lost. It was my mother's gift to me. I tried to find it anywhere and as soon as I saw my sister-in-law getting back from her regular spotty, she was already wearing my necklace. I approached her and confronted her about the necklace. Why are you wearing that? She raised her eyebrows and looked at me from head to toe. It doesn't look good on you and it fit me well, so I wore it. Why? Do you have a problem with that? Of course I do, because that is my mother's gift to me. It's mine, and you stole it. She pretended to be shocked and mocked a surprised face. Oh my, so are you accusing me of stealing this? It already came in contact with my skin, and my social media followers have already seen me wearing this. So this is mine. What is wrong with you? Just give it back to me, please. It is so important to me. She laughed at me as if what I said was a joke. Oh dear, I will never do that. Go and buy your own. This necklace is mine. I approached her to beg for my necklace, but she thought that I was about to attack her. That's why she pushed me so hard that my leg hit the ground with so much impact that I got injured. I couldn't stand immediately and she just laughed at me. <laughs> Poor stupid girl. She kicked me in the leg where I was injured. I screamed so loud because of the pain. The door opened and it revealed my mother. She caught the incident and she rushed towards me. Oh my God, my daughter! My mom shouted. I saw my sister-in-law dropped all her shopping bags as she stared at my mother. She was so shocked by the sight of her. My mother turned to her and I saw how shocked she was as well. You? My mother shouted and pointed at her. This is the first time I saw the anxiety on my sister-in-law's face. She was in so much fear as if she saw a ghost. 
She slowly stepped backwards and trembled with every step she made. You are, are her mother? My mom stood up and went near her angrily. What is happening? Yes, I am the mother of the girl whose dad you cheated with. And just right now, I saw you abusing her. You will seriously go to jail for this. You will pay for everything you did. I covered my mouth in shock. I never expected this. Kim is my father's mistress? And it is my father that Kim cheated on with her husband? I couldn't believe everything. My mother called the police and the ambulance immediately. I saw Kim go on her knees and beg on my mother. Please, I don't want to go back to jail. Please forgive me. She held my mother's feet and after a few sobs, she faced me. Please, Leah, I am so sorry. I don't know what to do anymore. Help me. I just gave her a blank reaction. My husband came home and was shocked by everything. He helped me with an injury as soon as the ambulance came. My mother instructed the officers to take Kim into custody. On top of that, my mother explained everything to my husband. He was so ashamed of everything that his sister did, and the mercy he had for her changed into hatred. I don't know her anymore. She is the sister I used to know. And with that, Kim was arrested for the second time. I was treated in the hospital. My mother took care of the legal process and my husband stayed by my side until I was fully healed. I realized that no matter how kind you are to someone, it won't change them. Kindness can soften a hard heart and I proved that with my sister-in-law. Her mistakes will always haunt her and no matter how many times she escapes them, it will always come to her and make her suffer consequences.